Good morning. It's Wednesday, February the 13th. Welcome to WGTV. You're kidding. No. It's February 13th. Yes, it is. Oh Wednesday my. morning. And who are you? I am Kim Best. And my name is Wayne Alley. Good morning to you. Hope you're doing well here on this day before Valentine's yes, Day. Yes, it hmm. is. Hope oh, you yeah. got your Valentine a special something. Yes, yes, yes. Kim, let's take a look at who's having, uh, who's on today's program. Yeah, absolutely. We have the city manager, Scott Stevens, is on today. He's giving a city update for the month of February, telling you exactly what's happening. Great. We have 3HC. We had a whole group come from 3HC to give us some oh, updates yeah. on what's happening yeah. there. We have Sarah Merritt. Oh, yeah. And we have um, Meg Grenade from DGDC. Excellent. So we have a full show today. We sure do. February 13th, this is WGTV Today, Wayne Goldsboro Television. And on this February 13th, take a quick look at our almanac here. This day, 1795. That's a ways back. I'd say but so. I remember it, <laughs> barely. The University of North Carolina became the very first U.S. state university to admit students. Really? A fellow by the name of Hinton James was the first student, and he was there for two weeks before the second student was able to show up. So he had the whole campus for two weeks? He had the whole place for two weeks, everything. And as I recall the story, he walked there from, I believe, Fayetteville or somewhere in that area. Hmm. To get to get to go to college there at UNC. Anyway, That's he was there for two weeks all by himself. Also on today's almanac, this was the day back about 13 years ago. The last original Sunday Peanuts comic strip appeared in newspapers. Peanuts creator artist Charles Schultz died the day before, and then the very wow. next day, the very last Peanuts was uh, was in the paper. Dan Price, a fellow, completed a 4,000 mile cross country tricycle ride this oh, day wow. in 2003. <laughs> Ten years ago today, he rode a tricycle from his home in Joseph, Oregon to Key West, Florida to make people aware of the benefits of environmentally friendly travel. Now, why a tricycle? Well, I don't know, and I'm not sure he's in trying to encourage everyone to ride a tricycle across the country, but that's environmentally he friendly, he, that's just what he came up with. He averaged 50 to 60 miles a day. That's a lot of Peddling. He carried a compact tent. He camped out at night. It is a lot of pedaling, and I think it may have been one of the adult tricycles. That's instead what I'm of, assuming. So. Yeah, you had, you know to go that far because one of the you know one yeah, of the, that wouldn't have worked so no, well. No, one of the little ones. No, mm -hmm. that wouldn't work at all. Uh, in the year 2005, Ray Charles' final album, Genius Loves Company, won eight Grammy awards. He's one of my favorites, of course. The late Ray Charles. You know that's, that's right. his first name. What? Ray Charles. That's his whole name. That's Ray his Charles' whole first, whole first name. name. Yeah, Ray What's Charles. His last name? Do you know? Robinson. Ray Charles Robinson. That's right. Dutch police five years ago today caught a 62-year-old man who had been driving around for 47 years without a wow. driver's license. 47 years. The man had managed to avoid getting caught by passing himself off as his brother who did have a license. His lucky streak ended when police checked his identity and found he was lying. Can you believe that? A 62-year-old man telling a lie. For how many years? 46? 47 years <laughs> 47? he drove around with no driver's license. Birthdays today include a monkey, Peter Tork, having a birthday today. He, and out of the group of four, he was probably the most talented musician. He could play so many things, mm -hmm. but he played bass on the, the TV show The Monkeys. Peter Tork is 71 years today. Goodness. Uh, Peter Gabriel uh, is having a birthday. The Eagle is 63. A birthday today for uh, the lovely Kim Novak. She is 60 today. Uh, Bell, Book, and Candle, and so many other great mm -hmm. movies. Kim Novak is, is 80 today. Wow. Uh, Coach Mike Krzyzewski. Oh, yeah. How oh, old yeah. is he? He's 66 today. How about that? Way to go, Coach. And that's our almanac for today on this 13th day of February. Wow, that's a lot of good birthdays, Wayne. I think so, too. We want to remind everyone that the Chamber of Commerce is hosting its business after hours, as it does every month. It will be scheduled for Thursday, February the 21st mm. from 5.30 until 7. Mm. It says create and make new business contacts, and it is the perfect place to do that. It's going to be held at REMAX, REMAX Outstanding Agents. Let's see, that's on 20, let's see, Casual Drive. That's where it is, Casual Drive. <laughs> You're laughing because I can't see the address, right? <laughs> Can you see it? Because I well, can't. Well, no, I, I don't like, yeah, well. It uh, is on Casual Drive. Can you oh see? Oh, yeah, yeah, 2711 Casual what Drive. What good eyes he go. has. Hey, well, no. Business after hours, so plan to attend yeah, if you'd like to go. make some good business contacts. 2711 Casual Drive. I think that, in fact, is what? Just north or west of, of Spence Avenue. Yes, it's right off of Spence, yeah. actually. Um, New Century Bank yeah. is right here. Remax is right across the street. Across they face the street. one another. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Good. Sure do. All right. Coming up in April, the uh, the Junior Livestock Show and Sale. And I'll tell you something. Believe it or not, there's actually this is actually a big deal. It's very exciting. Uh, this is when the uh, youngsters in the in the county uh, show their show their capability of how they're able to mm -hmm. to gr to grow, feed, treat, uh, and uh, and sell livestock. There's a tremendous amount of youth in this community that participate in that. That is so true, and it uh, it is uh, and out of this county comes some of the best in the state. That's right. So. Uh, so uh, we'll tell you more about that the closer we get to it. That's coming up in April. Well, Wayne, the fifth yeah. anniversary gala at the Paramount went over beautifully. Ooh. It was so great. I uh, just wanted, I haven't mentioned it since it happened, but it was a wonderful night. We had a good turnout. We mm. had so much talent uh, from the Malpas Brothers on down. The list was great. It, it was such a good show. We had good attendance, mm -hmm. and uh, if you didn't get a chance to do that, maybe in five more years you'll get that opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a really good night, yeah. really good night. That's uh, that's a lot of talent on on the stage there, and I and I hope they do it again soon. Five years. Five years. Every five years. Every five years. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see now. Oh, uh, there's going to be a transportation forum. I know we've, you and I have already talked about that, but we want you to save the date. There's going to be a transportation forum what? There's a transportation forum that will be whom? taking place. North Carolina DOT, the secretary, Tony Tata, Yeah. he will be the keynote speaker at a transportation forum where people are getting together in our community to talk about the future of transportation in eastern North Carolina. It's going to be held Thursday, February the 28th. It'll be at Goldsboro Country Club, and if you have questions, you can call the Wayne County Chamber of Commerce. Uh, their number is 734-2241. But that's just learning all about transportation in eastern North Carolina, how our community will be affected, and like I said, remember that the keynote speaker will be North Carolina DOT Secretary Tony Tata. Tony Tata, yeah. So is the transportation forum? <laughs> Forum, F O R U M. Oh, Forum. <laughs> yes. Oh, I forum. thought it was the transportation for him. Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you is. go. All right. Coming <laughs> up, the next step fair is the transitioning learners of all ages. The next step fair strives to help make transitioning smoother at any age by being a key source of information and connections to community resources and services for children and youth with special health care needs. This is going to be held February 26th at 10.30 a.m. at First Pentecostal Holiness Church, and that's at the corner of, I believe, uh, Spence and, no. No, not Spence. Spence. It's Wayne Memorial. Wayne Memorial and 70 by There you go. There you go. Okay. That's right. If you want information about that, uh, you can talk to someone from um, Wayne County Public Schools. You can talk to someone from uh, the local literacy interagency coordinating mm -hmm. council. Or you can call someone with an innovative approaches, Wayne County Health Department. They know all about this. The Next Step Fair coming up February 26th. That's right. For them. The Daddy Daughter Dance at Parks and Recreation was fabulous. I'll bet it was. They had such a good turnout. Mm -hmm. And we've got, we've got lots of pictures that we're posting all over the City of Goldsboro's Facebook page mm -hmm. and on our website. Mm -hmm. So cute. Aww. Such a special little night. Aww. They had a great turnout. And if you're interested in learning more about the opportunities that Goldsboro Parks and Recreation offers our community, <coughs> go to their website or their Facebook page, Goldsboro Parks and Recs. It, the list is long. I've got a whole page just full of information of things that they're offering for the community. Wow. It, the list is okay. so long, we can't list them all, but let me tell you, they have plenty to offer. If anybody ever says there's nothing to do in Goldsboro and Wayne County, we know better. We know better. We know better. We hope you know better. <laughs> This Saturday, there's going to be a blueberry pruning workshop. What? And believe it or not, this is so popular. This thing fills up quickly. So if there's any room left, it only costs you $10. It's a blueberry pruning workshop. Okay. And it's to be held at the SEFS service building on Stevens Mill Road. It's $10. And if you want to register, you can talk to Lisa Forehand at 919 513, this is a Raleigh number now, 513-0954, 919-513-0954. They're not able to hold spots, so you need to go ahead and commit yourself if you want to go to this thing. It's a blueberry pruning workshop featuring a guy named Bill Klein. He's a specialist in this area. That's coming up this Saturday. There's more and more blueberries in eastern North Carolina. And I love blueberries. As do I. And they're good for the brain. We've talked about that. They're good for the brain. Yeah. 
Well, then <laughs> I should be further along. <laughs> 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 now, well, I was gonna say it doesn't work miracles. Oh, okay. Uh -oh. Well, that explains uh -oh. that then. Okay. <laughs> well, I think it's time. Let's go see what City Manager Scott Stephen has there to say go. about the City of Goldsboro for the month of February and Dean Lee with 3HC. Stay tuned. Well, hello, uh, Scott Stevens, Goldsboro City Manager, back for our monthly update. They seem to come quicker and quicker, and I guess that's a, a good part of our business. Uh, we are back from the holidays. I hope all of you enjoyed your time with family and friends. I know many of us here at the city enjoyed that, and I certainly did myself. Um, we worked through the holidays, but now it's time. Our new year started. We're all back, and so we all are all back ready to work, I guess, back to normal hours. Uh, a couple exciting things going on in, in uh, Goldsboro and Wayne County. The first thing I'd like to share is there was an industry announcement uh, very recently uh, with Balfour Betty Rail, um, an expansion in Goldsboro, uh, 29 new jobs, a million dollars in investment, um, and I think it speaks very well for the economy in Goldsboro and Wayne County. Anytime you have a company that expands, it's a good news for your community. Um, it's better than even a new announcement because if they already know how to make money here and they're expanding here as opposed to somewhere else, that really speaks well for the local community. So again, kudos to uh, Wayne County and the city of Goldsboro and the community here that supports this industry and their expansion. It is coming with some grant funds from the state, $60,000, and then $30,000 from the city and the county. So we will match that grant, which is required of the state funding. But I think it's a good use and is, is Many of us are not inclined to give incentives. It is still good to provide an expansion um, in this community, and the incentives do pay for themselves in a very quick manner. I want to mention crime. We've talked about that at most of these, or at least a lot over the last six months. Uh, we did have 13 homicides in Goldsboro as we closed out the, the year of 2012, and that's a lot. One's too many, but 13's a lot for our community, much higher than our average. And I hope that in response, you're hearing some of the things we're doing of more community-oriented policing, more visibility, a mobile crime center or crime uh, station office that we're moving around, and a lot more effort to seeing us out in the, in the field. We are making arrests, so we're solving these cases, but we want to do more to prevent them. Um, and we are pursuing a new initiative. Uh, we've named it here locally GPAC, or Goldsboro Partners Against Crime. And it really is a three-pronged approach of the law enforcement side doing their part, the criminal justice system side doing their part with moving those that we identified to the front of the list. So it takes very little time to get in front of a judge and get a sentencing and a ruling in a case. But the most important part of that is the community. And we're still working through that community piece and trying to make sure we have all three of those pieces in place. Um, the mayor, council member, chief, uh, our coordinator, Sergeant Chero, and myself and some other community members visited High Point December 18th because this new initiative talks about bringing these, these people that are most likely to commit crime into a room and putting them on notice. They call it a call-in. They tell them, we're going to move you to the front of the list for everything if you don't change your ways. And if you'll change your ways, we're here to help. And that's the community piece. How do we help? Um, it doesn't guarantee them anything except we're willing to help them make a change or we're willing to move them to the front of the line in the ju judicial system if they're unwilling to change. We witnessed that in High Point. It was a very interesting meeting and um, we'll invite you if you're interested to attend one of ours in the near future. We hope to host that same type of event here and have that same initiative going on here. The results in High Point have been phenomenal. Uh, a 90% of those that are called in don't commit another violent crime. 90% of the people most likely to commit crime don't commit another violent crime. That is phenomenal in terms of results and we are expecting that similar result here in Goldsboro. Uh, I do want to say with the, with the Partnership Against Crime, if you will contact Sergeant Teresa Chero uh, in our police department, uh, she would be happy to either involve you or inform you about what we're doing. Her number is 580-4305, 580-4305. I said Christmas, the holidays, and we slowed down. Uh, doesn't mean we didn't work. Uh, just before Christmas, uh, the city and the county were made aware of grants from the states um, to support military activities and concerns to the military and in particular Seymour Johnson that would, might limit their ability to train. Uh, the city did apply for those funds uh, and we were successful in receiving $125,000 from the state which we have to match but to apply towards efforts of concern to Seymour Johnson to, that re relate to their mission. Um, and what we intend to use those funds for 
birds at the end of the runway continue to be a, a huge concern to the aircraft as they take off and come over the city's water reclamation facility and the wetlands in those areas and the equalization basins. And so bird nesting areas are a concern. Part of the funds will be used for that. Another portion of the funds will look at the ways to uh, continue support of the military and through our, our military affairs committee. And again, it requires a local match, but it wasn't a grant that we applied for just ahead of Christmas and were notified the week following Christmas. And we are completing our memorandum of understanding with the state and expect to put those funds to use very soon. It does require a local match, uh, and we will ask the county if they'll participate in that. But in either case, it's important that to our community that we protect Seymour Johnson, and I think the city will um, make sure those funds are spent in a very prudent manner. Talk a little bit about current projects or some current activities. Uh, I don't want to get too far into projects with this update. Uh, I will let you know our, our City Council is considering adopting a recreation master plan in January. Uh, we've had a lot of public meetings on that. It should be something that if you have an interest in, uh, you can, uh, you, you're aware of it. If you haven't heard about it before and you want to know, please contact my office and we'll make sure our Parks and Rec Director gets in touch with you. Um, our Parks and Rec Director is Scott Bernard, but if you'll call my office, 580-4330, uh, we will make sure that uh, we get in touch with you about the master plan and what it holds and if the council has yet approved it. But we expect that approval to come in January and it's just an update on what we'll do in our parks in the next five to 10 to 20 years. We're also in, in just different business for us. You'll hear us talking about a city council retreat. We tend to do that on an annual basis, a two-day event. Right now we've scheduled it for February 13th and 14th. It is certainly open to the public, but it will be different than council meetings. That We'll try to have our new city council talk about uh, what's important to them and sort of their vision for the community over the next three, five, 10, 15 years. Because some of the things we need to start today to complete in five or 10 years um, if we don't get started, we won't get there. And so we'll just see where our council wants to go. But a visioning part uh, will be included in our retreat and trying to help our elected officials point us in the direction they see us going. And so I would ask you to share your thoughts for the community with all of us ahead of that so that we can incorporate those thoughts and ideas as we go forward. The final thing I'd like to at least share with you is a little update on Streetscape. Is that project is one we did complete uh, just ahead of the holidays. I hope you've enjoyed or had a chance to take a look at it. Um, it was in the news most recently, and I just share this because I found it interesting that we have an article that sinkholes discovered near Streetscape lights. And the headline itself was a little uh, alarming. The article itself, uh, I think, dismissed it as being a landscape issue. And I would have to agree what occurred there not a big deal in terms of where we are or any concerns for the street sinking away. I just want to reassure the community the project is a well-built project. Uh, we feel very comfortable with that. And the contractor, who's a local firm, is committed to maintaining it uh, through the warranty period, which has not yet begun and will extend for a year. And small areas of settlement and landscaping is not an unusual or alarming kind of event. So I just want to make sure you're comfortable or hear from us uh, that the sinkholes or the depressions, as I would probably refer to those, really are not a big event, and if they are, do become that, we certainly would let you know. In moving that project forward, the council uh, agreed to allow us to seek engineering proposals, so we are doing that at this time. Um, I wouldn't expect to have any information back for the council to consider until late January, probably early February. So at their second January meeting or their first meeting in February, I would expect the city council would be considering do we move forward with the engineering side of the next two blocks. and getting what those cost estimates would be and what the design might look like. So that's our next news for Streetscape in terms of moving it forward. Still talking a year or more away from construction if the City Council decides to move forward with that project. And I think for today that's it. Um, as always, I would thank you for or encourage you to speak well of the community. It matters. You never know who's listening to you. Uh, if we can be of service to you, uh, we are here to serve you and we look forward to that. Please don't hesitate to call me with questions or comments. Um, you can do it through the website, you can do it through our office, uh, but we'll be happy to respond and look forward to talking with you. And uh, again, uh, we appreciate your interest in us as well. Thanks. CEO of 3HC Organization and Ms. Phyllis Hembry. She's a Community Relations Specialist. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you for having us. We're glad to have you on the show. Dean, can you tell the community more about what is 3HC? Absolutely. 3HC is a private not for profit agency. Uh, we provide home health, hospice, private duty, and private paid nursing assistant uh, care in the communities we serve. Even though we're based here in Goldsboro, we serve a much larger area. 17 counties, if you draw a line basically really? from Raleigh. Really? 17 counties? Yeah, absolutely. 
from we draw a line from Raleigh to Fayetteville and go to the coast. Except for the extreme border counties, we provide care through seven uh, regional offices. Plus, mm -hmm. as most folks know, the Kitty Askins Hospice Center is right. located here on Wayne Memorial Drive. If someone wanted some assistance or wanted to help with 3HC, how would they go about doing that? A great way to help us is uh, through volunteering. Uh, a good example is at Kitty Askins Hospital Center. We really could not operate uh, that facility without the support of volunteers, folks in the community. It could be as simply as uh, sitting with a patient, reading uh, the newspaper to them, helping answer phones, doing filing, things of that nature really help out a lot uh, to make sure we can continue to provide the care that our folks need. Another good way is just being a great caregiver. A lot of folks don't understand being a great caregiver allows us to keep folks in the home right. for as long as possible. We don't have to put them in an institution, you know, a nursing home or facility. As long as they can stay at home, uh, we can help support them be a good caregiver by teaching them the, the methods and techniques they need to provide the care to a flat or loved ones to be at home. So you can teach us th those tools that we need? Absolutely. Uh, as a matter of fact, when our nurses and therapists go out to visit a patient in the home, mm -hmm. uh, one of the first things they do is assess the patient's condition, mm -hmm. and then they're teaching not only the patient, but in most cases the caregiver, what are those things that are critical to that particular diagnosis for the patient, uh, do an inspection of the home, make sure it's a safe environment for the patient and the family to exist in. And then we provide, after that assessment, we develop a plan of care to help uh, make sure we're addressing all the uh, skilled needs they have. We mm -hmm. nursing, uh, therapy, including physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy, any social work needs that may be there as well. It really make sure we're able to allow them to be able to stay in the home safely. And you all have all of these services right there at 3HC? Right here at 3HC. Uh, we My like goodness. to refer to ourselves as the one-stop shop. If it That's can be what provided it like. in the home, uh, we can provide it uh, for you at 3HC. That is awesome. Are there any um, specifications that go along with who can get help or how you can get help for your loved ones? Well, I guess one of the first things is always under our doctor's care. Everything we do is under our doctor's orders. Um, in most cases, we get referrals from multiple locations. Uh, hospital, obviously, mm -hmm. Wayne Memorial Hospital is a big referral source for us here in Wayne right. County. Uh, most of the physicians in the community refer to us, as well as the facilities, assisted living, nurse, skilled nursing facilities and rest homes mm -hmm. refer to us as well. And you can always refer directly, uh, if you just have an inquiry or question, just call us directly okay. uh, at our office in our intake department. We usually can help you out and find the care that you need. Wonderful. So you can connect them with whatever Absolutely. their resource or whatever resource they need to exactly. take advantage of. Wow. Well, I had no idea that you all, you know, were a part of so many counties mm -hmm. right here in the state. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Well, I, I knew through the years 3HC is continuing to grow and to take on more and more responsibility. It sounds like now you have, you're the one-stop shop. That's it, exactly. Yeah. Uh, one of the things we find at probably education of the public at large is one of the greater challenges we have. Yes. It's amazing the number of folks we come across that don't realize the uh, number of services that are available to them. And a lot of folks suffer uh, needlessly when there right. is care available. So that's probably one of our biggest challenges we have and some of the events we're doing is really to educate the public. Awareness. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, Phil is talking about events that are happening through 3HC. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of the workshops and things that you are offering the community that's coming up. Well, we're very excited. Um, as Dean says, we do give quality care and compassionate care, but we do comprehensive care. And part of that comprehensive care is educating the community and um, sharing, giving back to them. 3HC was born out of a need that we saw for hospice and home health in Wayne County and other counties, obviously. Mm -hmm. But also, and we also, we have seen um, a need in this community for education on advanced planning. We see that in our assessments. People are coming to Kitty Askins. They're mm -hmm. um, making decisions when they're upset right. and just frantic, you know, and we'd like to, you know, we. The community has supported us so greatly that this is our way to give back to them and educate them. And we're going to do that um, in the form of five workshops. Um, the first is going, we wanted to spread it out all, all over the county so mm -hmm. more, you know, a lot of people could attend. Um, we're going to do the first one at the First PH Church in Goldsboro on February 14th, and it'll be from 11.30 until 1. We'll be providing a um, box lunch 
and we're going to our presenter for all of these workshops is going to be Dr. Robin Kingfield, who is one of our home health and hospice, well, hospice physicians. Um, she's duly certified in internal medicine and home and hospice and palliative care. She's oh, also, wow. you know, been in the ED at Way Memorial and other hospitals in the area. And she is on the staff um, at Campbell, um, the new medical school, school at Campbell. So she has got a wealth of information. Sounds like she is very well-rounded. She, <laughs> <does. laughs> she does. So, so she will be our presenter. We'll have, you know, on the different types of advanced planning, you know, as far as DNRs, power of attorney, advanced um, mental health care, um, most forms. So just a lot of decisions that sometimes we're faced and not always informed, you know, to right. do. So we're having this series of workshops. As I said, the first one will be at the First PH Church on the 14th. Do each of these have a different topic? No, or are they all the same? Okay. They're all the we're same just advanced planning. Okay. Trying to spread it out so as many people will be able to take advantage okay. of it as possible. How long will they last? They're going to, well, we'll be, you know, planning, um, the presentation will be at, you know, from 11.30 to 12, and then we'll have lunch, we'll provide lunch, and we're thinking 12.30 to <coughs> 1, um, and then answering, we'll have our social workers there, our chaplains, and other people that can help answer any questions that the people okay. that are So if people need have. to take off work or if they need, you know, to, to make some plans on how long to mm -hmm. plan to be at right. the seminar. We're planning the events to go from 11.30 to 1. Perfect. Okay. Um, and we do want people to pre-register as of we, we are having, we're providing lunch. Um, but again, the 14th is the first one. Mm -hmm. All of these are lunch events except for one. Okay. On the 15th, we wanted to include another area of the, uh, another demographic and that is our um, uh, professionals, um, we're, so we're going to have one in the evening on the 15th at the Services on Aging. They okay. have that new facility. Yes, so we're right gonna, there on Ash Street. Mm -hmm. It's going to be easy um, for everybody to get to, and that will be from 6 to 7.30. Okay. Again, you know, she'll, Dr. Kingfield will be doing the presentation and we'll provide, you know, a lunch, well, dinner at that time. Our other ones, um, Kim, are the First PH Church in Mount Olive. We're trying to include that into the county. Mm -hmm. um, then we'll have one on the 28th at the Bridge Goldsboro campus. And that's out on 70? No, 70 that West? is on Berkeley. Oh, you're doing the bridge mm -hmm. in Taylor. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. And then the last one is going to be March 1st at Best Grove um, Missionary Baptist Church, and that is on Tommy's Road. Okay, now to find out more information about all of these, can they go to your website? Absolutely. Because if, if somebody doesn't remember exactly which date goes with which venue, so they can go to your website they can go and look to our this website, up. which is www.3hc.org. With the number three, like with behind the number us. three, uh huh. And um, or they can call me to make their reservations. There's uh, my number is 919-735-1387, and my extension is 2208. And they can leave all their information on my um, answering machine and someone will be back in touch with them to confirm their you know, re reservation. Perfect. So okay. we're just really looking forward and to this. And this is free to the public? Free to the public. It's our wow. way of giving back you know, to the community yes. that supports us. Well, that is so wonderful. We're excited. We've so never first, done anything like this. Well, that is it's great that you're providing this for the community because you're right. So many times we make a lot of decisions when we're hurting, when we're upset, right. when our when our loved one is sick, right. and we're in the midst of all of it. So to be able to plan and get the information ahead of time, right. I'm and sure make an informed decision. Exactly, we'll make better goal. decisions. So the first one's February 14th, yes. then the list goes on right. and on of, right. of where the other ones are and, and what yes. dates you and have. We'll be. Um, in each, each, of the, each of these locations will be, um, most of them except for the Services on Aging is a church and we'll be putting inserts into their bulletins that they'll have that. And we'll have, obviously, they'll, I hope a lot of people will see this today and then we'll be running ads in the paper as well. Wonderful. So, All right, that sounds we'll great. We'll spread the word. Yeah, and 3HC does great things in our community, so this is a good way for you to go and learn about how to take care of your loved one, how to plan way in advance. If you'd like additional information, you can call 3HC or visit their website. Thank you so much for being with us. Well, good. We oh, haven't heard one yet this We morning. haven't had one today. So here's our trivia question for today. I'll throw the question out there. Well, okay, I'll just throw it out <laughs> there. And then, uh, and then I'll give the answer in the next segment. All right. According to the 2010 U.S. Census, which of mm -hmm. course is every 10 years, what in what state, I'm not going to ask for the name of the town, but okay. in what state would you find the least populous capital city? In other words, hmm. which state 
has the least amount of people living in their in capital. their capital city of all the capitals and there's of course there's 50 <laughs> hmm. and 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 I guessed at this and I was wrong so it's a surprising answer kind of okay kind of in the capital city can I have two guesses <laughs> they'll be wrong they usually well, not are. Necessarily. No, not necessarily. We've got to have a guess. Okay, okay, makes okay. It fun. All right, go ahead and take two. Vermont. Let me find another question. No! Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, my gosh. I'll are never you do kidding? that again. Really? <laughs> yeah. Vermont? Take really? two guesses, and then she gets it on the phone. What? Don't I, do that. I don't know. I just thought that was just a little state way up north. It is Vermont. Montpelier. Really? Of course, is the capital city of, of Vermont. Well, I know a girl who's just moved there, so that's why that state was on my brain. Seriously. She's a weather girl there. Or media, not a weather girl, excuse me, a meteorologist. Thank you very much. Sorry, let me get that right. The most populous capital city is in what state? <laughs> and it's not Vermont. <laughs> okay, the most populous. Which capital city, uh, state capital, has more people living in that than in that city than any other state capital? Texas? No! <laughs> oh, well. Okay. <laughs> Okay, that's my one guess. Okay. So we'll come back. All right, I was going to give you two, though. Right, go ahead and take another guess. Um, is it a typical answer? I am not yes. saying anything. It's California. wrong -o! I figured it would be wrong. <laughs> I thought, oh, well, why not try? Okay, well, those are good guesses, though. Good answers. Wrong. <coughs> <laughs> wrong. Yeah, wrong. Wayne's happy about that. Well, I'm, I'm yeah. Yes, you're happy I'm about thrilled. it. Just go ahead and say it. I'm happy. <laughs> well, let's remind everyone about some of the blood uh, drives that are coming up. Good idea. It's coming up. Let's see. Oh, my goodness. Tomorrow, there's one at Rosewood High School. Okay. Tomorrow at 9 a.m. Tomorrow, 9 until 2, mm -hmm. Rosewood High School. Of course, as we've told you before, you get an Adams car wash coupon with that. Mm -hmm. Most people know where Rosewood High School is, but if you have questions, you can call Tammy Forrester at 919-735-7201. That's at Rosewood High School tomorrow, 9 to 2. Okay. Tammy's doing a great job there she with the Red Cross. She certainly yeah. is. She's doing a great job. Well, while Wayne is still digging yeah, for am. the next thing he wants to talk about, I'll, I'll remind oh, yeah. you okay. about a pig in the park that's coming up. We want you to save the date. It's not until April the 12th and the 13th. It's a family-friendly event to spotlight Wayne County's history and its barbecue tradition. They'll have pig cooking. Uh, they'll have food, vendors, music, activities for children, fun for the entire family. All the proceeds go to benefit the Boys and Girls Club of Wayne County. You can visit their website. It's piginthepark.com, and it'll give, give you more details, and we'll give you more closer to the date. But save this date, April 12th and 13th. Mm. Oh, it'll be at Old Waynesboro Park. They're doing it different this year. Oh. Old Waynesboro Park. Oh. Boy, a pig in the park, oh boy. That's right. Love it. Well, let's see, who's up next? We have a program up next. We have the... Uh, we, we have Sarah Merritt. Sarah Merritt, and we start out with the DG... Uh, no, we start, we start, we start with out Sarah. with Sarah Merritt, and then we go to the DGDC. That's exactly that's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> okay, that's up next. Good morning. Joining me today is Sarah Merritt, Executive Director of the Arts Council of Wayne County. She's here to tell us exactly what is happening at the Arts Council and all the activities that you can participate in. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Well, you all, we talk about it all the time, but you all have such a long list of activities yes. and things happening at the Arts Council. You have a long list and we appreciate the fact that you always have so many things Good. offering to our citizens. So tell me about it, Sarah. What's going on? Oh, wow. We have so many things happening right now. Um, right now, we have two exhibits um, that are on display at the Arts Council. One is an exhibit of art called Art of the Paramount. And it is artwork by local artists and artifacts and costumes um, in celebration of the Paramount's fifth anniversary. Absolutely. I know that one's yes. going to be great. Now, yeah. So that's going to be paintings and all types yes, of things? Yes, it's up right now. And uh, it's a really, it's a neat little exhibit. It's got some historical stuff. And it's, so it's pretty cool. Oh, I bet. And then we also have a wonderful exhibit called um, True Nature, You People Are Animals. And um, uh, Wayne and I have been talking about yes, that one. We can't a, wait to see that. <laughs> it's a great exhibit. Um, it's uh, the work of one of our studio artists named Adam Beebe and um, it's he basically created this exhibit for to exhibit at the Arts Council um, 
and it's just drawings of um, animal heads on people's bodies. And it sounds really oh, weird, but wow. it's so cool. It's very, very neat. It's, uh, there's probably, I think there, last count there are 105 of them. Are so they like pencil drawings or are they they're, paintings? Um, they're, they're like a pen and ink. It's kind of like a paint pen okay. that he uses. Um, he's very, very talented. So, And they're small. They're not you oh, know, okay. very large. So are it's, these it's, for purchase? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. So they, I think they range from $8 to $60, depending on the size. So, uh, well, so that'll really be interesting. Neat. We, we, we have to bring one to the show and let us see I it should, sometime. I should. I that. should. That'd we we actually made t-shirts out of uh, um, some of the images. Oh, wow. Um, because we just thought they were so cool. And, oh, yeah. Uh, it was just such a fun exhibit to put together. We had to figure out, um, work really hard to find a way to hang it because they were, they're, it's, you know, they're on paper little. and they're small. So you can't, really can't frame them and you can't tape them or do anything so we we, we came up with a really ingenious ah. way to, to hang them so I think people would probably be it's it's pretty cool I, I'm pretty proud of it I'm so. sure y'all are so creative yes, anyway yes. now when does that one start that started um, that opened at the beginning of the month okay. and so that runs through both of these exhibits run through February 22nd okay great so people mm -hmm. need to get on out there and come and by come and, and see them. and what are your hours by the way uh, we are open Monday through Wednesday uh, 9 to 5 and Thursday and Friday, um, 9 to 7, and Saturday, 4 to 7. So people can come in the evenings on yeah. Thursday, so Friday, After work, Saturday, people yeah. have the opportunity, yeah. and on the yeah. weekends, great, yeah. great. So, and then this weekend on Saturday from 10 until noon, we have a Valentine's Day party um, for ages 4 and up, and kids can come and make a make some homemade valentines and we've got some really cool things to to use to create their valentines and then they're also going to make a really cute little valentine hanging for for that little party so that's fun and that's ten dollars for per child mm -hmm. and uh you know people can just call the arts council 736-3300 to register so, so they do need to register ahead yes of time. It's, it always helps because that way we know we have enough supplies True. that that's but yeah. i mean of course we don't turn anybody away when they come you in, never so. do <laughs> you never so, do and then our next exhibits um open on march 1st and that is uh an exhibit by dreamweaver you know dreamweaver oh, yes. local very talented local mm -hmm. artist um, he's got an exhibit opening called Blue and the Ladies. Uh, it's a portrait exhibit of portraits. It's a very, very interesting um, concept. And then Joanne Lisak is going to mm -hmm. be exhibiting in our second floor gallery. Uh, some of her paintings. She's also a very talented artist. Really? Yes. I did not know yes. she was an artist. So, wow. We yeah. have so much talent. I know. Talent. We do in this community. So we're excited about that. And that is going to be fun, a fun opening because it coincides with First Friday. And that's become a very popular event. We just had it on this past Friday yes, and did. I think we had about 100 people. Wow, so it's really uh, growing. So it is So when's growing. your next one? Uh, March 1st. March 1st, okay. And the so time that that starts? It five starts five, 5 to 8 it runs. Sometimes okay. a little bit later than 8 because people get there and they start having fun exactly. and talking. Tell us what First Friday is for those who ha I can't imagine people <laughs> haven't heard but just in case. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, an event that we do every month on the first Friday obviously from 5 to 8 and uh, the purpose is to let just let the community be able to come in and uh, see our exhibits, um, meet new people, mm -hmm. and meet all of our studio artists. And we have now we have six studio artists. Yeah, all of our studios. Full. Yes, we are full. So we're very excited about that. And we have some wonderful talent in mm -hmm. those in that group of people. And we typically will have live music, and uh, and then also this past time we just started. Uh, uh, what we're going to try to do with each first Friday is an artist demonstration and oh, wow. we oh, had I've Eric Schreffler came to the last first Friday and did an action painting demonstration it was awesome to to some really great music and then we he generously donated the painting to the Arts Council and we raffled it off and um, it was very, very successful raffle. Let That's me just say. what I heard. I was hearing so, great things but yes. then you're watching him paint. So on everybody the spot. watched him paint. I um, yeah, it was pretty, and that's intense. I, yeah. I, I give him credit because I don't, I can't. <laughs> with all those eyes with people watching, watching you, me, yeah. but, but people st st really, I mean, they were fascinated by it. So oh, sure. it was really, really cool to see everybody's reactions, and everybody just really loved it. So we're going to try to do that every uh, for every first Friday. This next one, um, actually, we're going to raffle off a pet portrait by myself. Um, oh, great. So I'm going to be not quite as animated and fun <laughs> to watch as Eric. Um, I'll probably do a little bit of a demonstration, but um, it's, you know, it'll just be fun for people to come in and see some, right. see some work and make some money for the Arts Council. Too always, always. So. Then you have a big summit coming up. Yes, we do have a, the um, Art Summit. Uh, comes, it's here on uh, 
Thursday, February 21st. Um, it starts at 12.45 um, to about 5 o'clock. Uh, and the Arts Summit is hosted by uh, Arts North Carolina, which is our state arts advocacy right. organization. And they ask uh, us to host it here in Goldsboro, the Eastern Region Summit. So there'll be people from all over the eastern part of the state, artists and um, arts leaders and community leaders and business people coming to um, just get together and talk about the importance of the arts and economic development uh, and how they can really play a role in revitalization of downtowns and, and that sort of thing. It's going to be a lecture even, style thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's going to be well. There's some networking to it, and mm -hmm. there'll be a lot of interaction with the speakers. And um, the keynote speaker is Tony Siobhan from, um, and I never know if I pronounce that right. From, <laughs> he's a mayor of Fayetteville. Uh, oh, okay. Really awesome, awesome person. And then we have a panel discussion with uh, um, Dr. Phil. Philip Kerstetter from Mount Olive College, um, Cindy Darwin, who is a downtown property owner and the owner of the Arts Council's building now, and uh, let's see, who else do we have? David Wheel, of course, great example of a person that supports the <laughs> arts and does a lot of public-private partnerships. And then Kimberly Van Dyke from the Downtown Wilson Development Corporation is going to talk about the Wallace Great. Simpson project. See the wide variety yeah, of people so it's coming from be a all over cool the day. state. I think it's going to be a cool day. Is so. anybody invited? Anybody can come. Uh, they can go to our uh, the Arts Council's website, artsinwayne.org, and uh, just there's a on the home page there's a place where you click on the link and it takes you. You can register. It's twenty dollars because we're going to provide lunch as well. Okay. So, um, so it's going to be a really cool day. It's a great chance to get to meet people and hear yeah. some really interesting people talk about, you know, their experiences. Well, it's a way to get involved. If you're a creative mm -hmm. person and if you have arts in the forefront of your mind yep. and wanting to promote that, that's a great event to attend. Yeah. And you get to mingle and meet other people yes. that are all across the state. Yep. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Wow, you've got a long list, Sarah. Yes, we do. <laughs> you keep us busy. And what we really like about the Arts Council and appreciate about it is you all have opportunities from young children all the mm -hmm. way to adults. Mm -hmm. I know Wayne and I had a really good time when we went at Christmas and we were learning <laughs> to paint ornaments. ornaments. Oh yes. Yeah. So you, gotta, you have to come back and do yeah. another and do another. Uh, well, uh, we can't paint pets. We can, so I'm not really sure what we can do. <laughs> well, we'll, I'm not gonna up, speak we'll for come Wayne, up with something. We'll come up with something. That sounds good. But, yeah. but thank you guys for what you do. You offer no, great no opportunities and thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. So if you're interested in learning more about the Arts Council, visit their website, artsinwayne.org, and Sarah Merritt and her crew will be there to help you learn more about Arts in Wayne County. Thank you for being with us. Development Corporation. Hello, Meg. Hello. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. Well, you all have some exciting things happening. We do. You, the DGDC is bringing a special performer to the Paramount Theater. Tell me who this is and what, what the special event is all about. We have, on May 4th mm -hmm. um, at 7 p.m., David Holt will be at the Paramount Theater, and he's doing a tribute to Doc Watson. So tell me who Doc Watson is. Doc Watson, um, he was an amazing musician. Uh, he was born in Goldsboro, or not Goldsboro, I'm sorry, in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, but he, the man was a dream with a banjo. Really? And he had a huge following, um, very popular in our area. And he passed away last year, um, but David Holt does a terrific tribute to him, and he considers Doc Watson one of his biggest mentors. Really? Mm -hmm. Now, tell me more about David Holt himself. He is a, a musician, storyteller, uh, just fantastic. Also, he plays dozen different acoustic instruments. Um, he's won four Grammys. My goodness. Uh, yeah, he's he's a big deal. Sounds and he's like coming it. to Goldsboro. <laughs> so I think uh, tickets will sell fast, um, but we wanted to get him out there early so anybody who wanted to get some had a chance to, to go and grab them. Well, if people want to get tickets to this exciting concert, mm -hmm. how do they go about that? Um, they're on sale through the Paramount Theater ticket box office. Mm -hmm. um, and they can call them at 583-8432 or they can go online and purchase them through their website at goldsboroparamount.com. So the concert will be at the Paramount. Mm -hmm. What time of night is it? 7 p.m. 7 p.m. How long can we expect for it to last? I would say it'll probably last about two and a half to three hours. Um, there will be a, an intermission in between um, so people can get up and stretch their legs. Um, but, you know, I've had people already, you know, I talked with the Paramount Theater last week and they said, we had someone call and, 
and say that they saw it on uh, David Holt's websites and they they've already gotten tickets for it. And you know, wow. I haven't even really been out there. And it's just February. I know. <laughs> so, like I said, if people want tickets, they better get them soon because they're going to go fast. What can we expect to see in his show? Um, it's it's um, bluegrass kind of music. Um, and like I said, Doc Watson was amazing with a banjo, so uh, I think you're going to see a lot of banjo, um, a lot of acoustic performances, but it's going to be, the music is, is wonderful. I mean, you won't be able to go and not be sitting there tapping your feet the whole time. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's an upbeat evening yes. of many different kinds of musical instruments, it sounds like. Yes. So he plays the instrument. He doesn't sing. He sings. He too. sings mm -hmm. and plays the instrument. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. It's a one-man show. Yes, he is, and it is well, well worth going to see. All right, that sounds good. So then go to the Paramount Theater mm -hmm. and get your tickets. Do you know that website? Yes, it's goldsboroparamount.com. Goldsboroparamount.com. If you're interested in seeing David Holt, mm -hmm. then that's the way to go. Get your tickets now. Sounds like they're moving fast. We're back on WGTV today. It is the 13th of February, the day before. I started to say Thanksgiving. <laughs> Not Thanksgiving, it's, but uh, Valentine's. Valentine's, that's it. <laughs> Thanksgiving, the, uh, boy, how many months are you off? <laughs> <laughs> I've been off all my life. Here we go, Wayne County Reads, a lot of stuff going on with Wayne yeah. County Reads. And later on this week, or is it next week? Anyway, soon we'll have a, uh, a presentation by a lady out at, the, uh, out at the Wayne County Public Library. She was talking about uh, the book and mm -hmm. actually had a little video of Rudolfo Anaya, the author of the book. Anyway, great. that'll be coming up. All right. Great, great. We have a something new that Goldsboro Parks and Recreation is doing. Um, they are having a shad fishing tournament. Really? Yes. On Saturday, March the 18th from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Wow. It's $10 per angler. That's the entry fee. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, sponsored by Easy Bait and Tackle. Of course. But Shad Fishing Tournament, they want you to go ahead and call Goldsboro Parks and Recreation and mm -hmm. get registered. It's going to be a fun event. They have all kinds of giveaways and mm -hmm. free things that they're doing. But it's a $10 entry fee, and it is Saturday, March 18th. So mark your calendar. That's yeah. going to be a good time. Uh, that's a Shad Festival. That's a, a, a tournament. That's always a lot of fun. Oh, Gary yeah. Bevel does a great job oh, putting yeah. all that together out there. Yeah. What a guy. Way to go. Well, let's see. Three easy ways to give your... Fiber intake, uh -oh. a makeover. Well, not the, <laughs> no, no, this is okay. Um, <laughs> drinking, for instance, number one, drinking 100% juice can be a good way to get extra vitamins and, and antioxidants, but most juices have been robbed of their fiber. Think uh, about that. They have lots of sugar, too. Instead of pouring a glass of juice, enjoy instead fresh, tasty fruits and veggies that are high in fiber like blackberries, raspberries, pears, tangerines, green peas, and sweet potatoes. Potatoes? Po potatoes. Potatoes. No need to add sugar or salt. These choices are naturally delicious anyway. And yes, they are. Yes. Yes, they are. I love all that stuff. Skins are in. Number two, when eating your favorite fruits and veggies, keep your peeler packed away. You can maximize your fiber intake and still savor the flavor of foods like apples and pears and potato p p potatoes by eating them with the skins on, mm -hmm. which I do. Not do you? Mm -hmm. do. Always have. All right. Also try mixing it up by throwing your favorite berries in a blender with low-fat yogurt and skim milk to make a quick smoothie. Oh, I bet that is good. I bet it is too. And number three, the last one, keeping your house stocked with fresh fruit and veggies can be a big stretch on some household budgets, but don't let fiber slip through the cracks. Jazz up your pantry with long-lasting dried fruits like uh, and nuts like apricots and, and raisins and cranberries, almonds, pistachios, and walnuts, or almonds, or almonds. Uh, toss any variety of these together for a quick trail mix to enjoy on the go. So it's just a little advice yeah. about how to kind of jazz up the fiber in your life there, which is always good for yes, you. Yes, it is. Always Absolutely. This weekend, the Center Stage Theater is putting on their show called Two-Eyed Titus. Arg. That's right. We saw a little tiny snippet of that at the gala the other night Arg. at the Paramount. Yeah. It's going to be a good show. It's Friday, February the 15th. The show begins at 7.30 right there at the Paramount. For adults, tickets are $12. And for students and seniors, they are $10. For more information, you can call 919-583-8432. That's this weekend. Didn't Two Eyed Titus. Didn't Gene McClendon write that? He did. Gene McClendon wrote this um, production, 
So if nothing else, you need to go just see what local people can do. Well, you know it's going to be you funny. You know it's going to be funny. You know it's going to be funny. That's right. We've had an interview on here on the show recently yeah. uh, that Sherry Archibald did with that whole crew, and I mean it's going to be entertaining. It is going to be entertaining. No doubt about it. Monday, February the 18th will be the next city council meeting. Okay. Of course, work session begins at 5 <laughs> o'clock, and then at 7 we'll have the formal meeting in council chambers. And then the following morning at uh, 8 o'clock, uh, Wayne County Commissioners will be meeting for a briefing in Council Chambers on the fourth floor of the County Courthouse. And then the meeting itself actually gets underway at 9 a.m. And you're invited to attend both the briefing and the meeting. 8 o'clock for the briefing, 9 o'clock for the meeting. And that's on the fourth floor of the Wayne County Courthouse. All right. And Wayne, have you already mentioned the Black History Month celebration? You did, didn't you? I no. You did not? Okay. I did not. Well, here, there's two or three different ones going on, and this is one that is being offered at Mount Olive College. Oh. Okay. Um, Thursday, February the 21st mm -hmm. at 7.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. in the Mount Olive College Southern Bank Auditorium. They are having, uh, let's see, Black History Month Celebration. Black History Month Celebration. The, 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 I, know. Yeah, I know. The public is invited. <laughs> The evening will be filled with students and faculty sharing stories, songs, poetry, and art honoring and memorializing African Americans who have made a significant contribution to their communities and to humankind. Although there is no charge for the admission, a canned food item is appreciated. The items will be donated to Helping Hands United Mission that's located on Smith Tr Street in Mount Olive. Gosh, I can't talk today. Well, that's, that's okay. But for more information, listen. you can call Carla Williamson at Mount Olive College. And that is Thursday, February the 21st, 7.30 p.m. Okay, Black History Month. Yes. Celebration. Very good. Yes. Okay. Have you ever heard anyone say it's like nailing jelly to the wall? Yes, I have actually. Have you actually I heard that? I have actually heard that one before. <laughs> well, guess where that came from? Where? Believe it or not, Teddy Roosevelt is given credit for that. Hmm. In fact, he came up with a lot of stuff. He came up with not only good to the last drop. Just he did come up with that one? He came up with that. Okay. And then, of course, Maxwell House he jumped says, all that's over that. That's not a Maxwell House? <laughs> well, it's, it's, he yeah. was drinking at a place called Maxwell House. And then, oh. uh, when the, uh, then the coffee, uh, they, they uh, made, made the coffee and, and used that tagline uh, ever since. But he did hmm, say that. He's given credit for it anyway. But he also said, of course, uh, walks off, uh, speaks off and carry a big stick. Right, yes. All right, that's, yes. he's best known for that one. Mm -hmm. But he also had several other things. Nailing jelly to the wall um, simply means an impossible task. Right. You just, it just can't be done. Uh, uh, nature faker is another one he came up with, which means nature one faker. who knowingly promotes humanized and or exaggerated ideas about animal behavior. Hmm, All right. I didn't know that one. Such as nature the cow faker. jumped over the moon. Oh. That's a nature faker. Okay. He came up with one of my favorite terms, weasel words. What's that mean? A weasel word is soft and ambiguous language. It, what it means is that, the, that you, and you hear it a lot in, and I hate to say this, politics. Yeah. Uh -huh. But you hear it a lot. Uh, it's when they're actually speaking and they're not really saying anything. Okay. There's a lot it's of rhetoric blah, blah, blah. involved. Mm -hmm. uh, and here's how, how it's defined. One of our defects as a nation this is a direct quote from Teddy Roosevelt. He said, one of our defects as a nation is a tendency to use what have been called weasel words. Now, when a weasel sucks eggs, the meat is then sucked out of the egg. And if you use a weasel word after another, uh, then there's nothing left of the other word. The weasel word just kind of deflates the other right. word. So it's, uh, hmm. that's according to a 1916 New York Times article when Roosevelt was accused of plagiarizing the term, which appeared in the Century Magazine back in 1900. Roosevelt then said he heard it from a friend years earlier, so he actually made it popular, apparently, mm -hmm. and they brought attention to it, which made it even that much more popular. Of course. <laughs> he created or came up with the word square deal. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, he did uh, all kinds of it's things, It's called he? a fair, yeah, which means a fair arrangement. He also came up with the word mollycoddle. Never heard that one. Oh, really? Okay, that's weak and cowardly. Oh, Mo when you, mollycoddle. Yeah, a mollycoddle. A uh, mollycoddle vote it consists of the people who are soft physically and morally, he said. Okay. All right, strong as a bull moose. Oh, okay. Strong as a bull moose. Uh huh. To sport immense and formidable strength. Ha. Huh. Well, you know what, Wayne? You probably need to give us that answer to your trivia question. The smallest state capital, with the smallest population, rather, is, you got it, Montpelier, Vermont. 
The largest is drum roll, Phoenix, Arizona. Wouldn't have never guessed largest it. Largest population really? of the state capitals. I wouldn't have gotten that one either. Phoenix, How about that? Arizona. Yeah, 1.4 million people. The largest hmm. population in their city of, capital. Of the capital. Yes. In the, well, in my the goodness. Capital. All right. Well, Wayne, I guess we are done for today. We are. We have a full show tomorrow. We Somebody do. from the Highway Patrol, Boys and Girls Club, Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. Stay tuned. You're going to want to see that tomorrow. That's right. That's tomorrow. That begins at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. On, on Valentine's the, Day. On Valentine's Day. I love That's you. Right. There you go. <laughs> Join us again tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock here on WGTV Today. And until then, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. And this is what's happening in your community.